So I'm gonna put them through a battery of tests like 2000 nit content, sports, and bright HDR movies. Stop the FOMO to even for missing out on the brightest OLED TV money can buy. We're talking about the Samsung S95C and today we are going to test it side by side against one of the brightest mini LED TVs out there, the Hisense U8H. Yes, I know LG fans, the G3 is also in the running for brightest OLED TV. But that's for a future test head to head against the S95C. Right now, I wanna test the S95C against a benchmark bright TV, and that's a mini LED TV. Remember, the Hisense U8H was my editor's choice TV last year for HDR impact. Well, it doesn't get much brighter than the U8H. By the end of this review, you will know how bright the S95C can get with real content. I know you can't wait to get your hands on the best and brightest OLED TV ever made. But first, you have to get the approval of your significant other, otherwise known as the spouse acceptance factor. In other words, what better way to get your dream TV than to say, but your skin looks amazing. This video is sponsored by Foreo, a Swedish beauty tech company that's partnering up with me to help TV enthusiasts sweeten the deal. So as part of your TV buying strategy, why not bundle it with this flagship beauty device? Meet the Bear. In one week, the Bear has been clinically proven to improve skin firmness and reduce fine lines. Of course, my wife has been using it for the last several weeks, loves it, and demanded to know why I didn't give this to her last year when I was buying TVs. Thanks to the Bear, your TV buying experience will be that much easier. I've linked the bear in the video description below. This is the first year OLED TVs can claim that potentially they can hit 2000 nits. Previously, just getting over 1000 nits was considered quite a feat, but this year, two technologies claim that accomplishment. LG's WOLED and Samsung Display's QD OLED. The S95C is what we're testing today. The LG G3 with MLA, potentially, could beat the S95C, but that remains to be seen. Today, the S95C is gonna go against a bright mini LED TV in real content. Next to each other, you're gonna see whether the S95C can really do what it claims, which is be a TV you can get instead of a mini LED TV. The content we'll be using to compare these TVs are first from the Spears & Muscle Benchmark UHD disc at 2000 nit grade, and then HDR high bitrate movies from my Kaleidoscape server, and lastly, sports content, specifically hockey and soccer, two of the sports that many complain OLED just doesn't get bright enough. So let's get into it. Starting with the Spears & Munsell Benchmark UHD disc at 2000 nit grade. Both TVs are in filmmaker mode. The Hisense U8H is calibrated while the Samsung S95C is not, but I am going to put its tone mapping on active to maximize luminance with minimal effect on color accuracy and gradients. And we're off. As you can see, the S95C on the right, brightness is very similar to the Mini LED Hisense U8H on the left. Increasing the bright white window brightness a bit more in the next few scenes, we see that the S95C is keeping up. Reducing the exposure in my camera results in these changes in the waveform. So no, it's not ABL kicking in, but rather my exposure changes. You'll see this go up and down as I adjust exposure to either emphasize shadow detail or peak brightness detail. Just pay attention to the relative brightness of the two TVs to each other. And let's pause this image when the entire screen is required to be bright white. The mini LED is a little bit brighter and the S95C simply cannot put out enough brightness. But when you add color at a high luminance, yes, the S95C easily keeps up and can get even a little bit brighter. Ooh, great scene to study tone mapping differences. Let's talk about it. The S95C, if you notice, doesn't get as bright, it has less white subpixel. However, on the left, the U8H chooses to push the brightness using more white. The S95C pushes more color, more color luminance. The question is, which one is correct? Or rather, which is creator's intent and which is editorializing? Here we see how active tone mapping raises the luminance, the brightness of the clouds a bit above reference. 
In a bright room, this may not be noticeable, but in a dark room, you may want to go with more accurate luminance. This is the specular highlight pop that OLED generally is so known for. With mostly yellows and oranges in the specular highlight, QD OLED can really push its peak brightness. Here we see active tone mapping on the S95C raising a little bit of everything. Yes, peak highlights are a bit brighter, but look at the shadow detail, a bit raised above the mini LED. Ooh, uh, in the smaller windows, QD OLED just kills it for the S95C. The shades of yellow and orange are just so vibrant. Here, accurate tone mapping of the Hisense U8H actually beats the active tone mapping of the S95C because it preserves the dynamic range. You see how the bright yellow tulip stands out there's a dynamic range separation between the bright yellow and the red background. However, with active tone mapping on the S95C, everything is raised to the level of the yellow tulip. After speaking to Stacy Spears, this yellow tulip is supposed to pop and is brighter than the background. Unfortunately, the S95C is unable to distinguish what is supposed to pop and what isn't in the scene. Fortunately, less complex scenes like this one are properly rendered by the active tone mapping of the S95C, and it looks great. Color luminances just pop. They leap out off the screen. I love this aloe scene because that right eye, even though it's bright, it's a bright orange. My camera cannot even capture the depth and saturation of that orange. All right, it's HDR movie time, starting with The Greatest Showman. Then Alita, Aquaman, Grindelwald, Mad Max, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Matrix Resurrections. With dynamic tone mapping enabled on the S95C, this scene is bright, vibrant, HDR impact to the max. Just look at those killer specular highlights. Ouch. Active tone mapping adds HDR impact here by separating the dynamic range of the trapeze artist and the bright lights above. Although it elevates HDR impact, active tone mapping does raise shadow details a bit, though great for a bright room. In a darker room, you may not need that extra push in the shadows. My absolute favorite scene to demonstrate the power of specular highlights. I have yet to find a mini LED TV that can do the stars in that hat justice. Next up, Alita. Yes, the HDR was disappointing, but turning on active tone mapping, suddenly it looks like an HDR movie. I love it. Now, Aquaman already has great HDR impact. What happens when you turn it up a notch with active tone mapping? Yes, color luminances pop even more. But when it's a bright white window like this, not even QD OLED can help it beat the mini LED. Hmm, maybe MLA on the W OLED could do this? We gotta revisit this test later. But <laughs> those specular highlights. But bright on dark is too easy. Mad Max, it's all about bright specular highlights against a bright background. That is something OLED has been struggling with, but not the S95C. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. If it's bright, white, slightly larger windows, QD OLED cannot get as bright as Mini LED. However, give it just some color, reds, yellows, blues, the luminance of each color takes over. Check it out. In Godzilla vs. Kong, just add a little bit of blue into that white and boom, radioactive specular highlights. Now that you know what to look for, Grindelwald, when is it white? When is there a color? You can really see the strength of the S95C with the QD OLED panel. When there's color luminances that need to be bright, it really does take over. 
but if it's a pure white and it's a larger window, there is some work to be done. We're going to use the matrix resurrection to see how long the S95C can sustain its bright white window. It's pretty close at the start, but can the S95C hold on to sustained white for almost two minutes? Quick settings check, it's in active mode, no other modifiers. Let's fast forward till the end and see how well it does. It definitely held on, but once calibrated, I don't expect it to be as bright, but at least it didn't drop in brightness over the course of the minute 45 seconds. Next up, Bright Sports in SDR, U8H in Vivid Mode, and the Samsung in Dynamic Mode. Definitely, large white windows, more brightness, more power in the U8H. No doubt, hockey ice on the U8H definitely brighter, but more likely, the uniformity and clean panel on the QD OLED will be better than any mini LED TV. Ah, trade-offs. And what about football or soccer? Yep, green grass, definitely bright enough on the S95C. So this is very interesting. When it comes to pure white content, yes, Mini LED is still ahead. S95C just cannot get there. It comes close, but not quite there. You saw what happened in that Matrix Resurrection scene, right? The white is bright, brighter than it's ever been, but in a full screen, it's just right below. So ultimately, what does this mean? With bright white content that covers the entire screen or most of the screen, like snow, you know, the horses in the snow, hockey and the like, well, the mini LED does get ahead. However, in any other content, whether it's color, even bright color, like the green grass on a soccer field or a football field, the S95C can easily keep up with any mini LED TV out there. Obviously, if you watch movies or content where there's a lot of white and you need that to be bright in a bright room, well, still, the mini LED is your only option. But there is one possibility, the LG G3. Yes, the G3 specializes in the white subpixel. The G3 with MLA maybe can keep up with the Mini LED. We will see. That's coming up next. Now, if you want to know more about Samsung's QD OLED, I interview Samsung Display here and here. And for more OLED TV reviews, check it out over here.